pray uh, to open Sabbath school. Amen. All right. Happy Sabbath once again. All right. Um, it is always good to be here. Ah, it is always good to be here. It's a breath of fresh air every time we come here, and I'm just happy to see everyone here this morning. All right, Sister Tash, I'm very happy to see you. Praise God. All right. Um, this morning, Sister uh, Yvonne went over to health and she made a wonderful statement. And she says, when we treat the body terribly, we become Pharaoh. All right. That's a very profound statement. We become Pharaoh. All right. That's a wonderful lesson. Praise God for teaching you that, Sister, um, Sister Yvonne. And so this morning, um, one, of the, one of the reasons why we become Pharaoh it's because God's people is made in the image of God. Amen? All right. And when you treat your body in a particular way, you're saying, I know not Jehovah. All right? You know not the God who made you in his image and likeness. All right? And so this morning, we'll look just into that. We'll talk about the image uh, that, that, that is to be made at the end of the world. But most so, I want to make it personal so that we see this in us. All right? Uh, we know what's going to happen all day. It's going to happen because prophecy says it's going to happen. But we must be mindful that these things are only to teach us, uh, to give us principles as to how we must live to keep the same thing from happening to us in our personal lives. Amen? So the, the, the notes this morning is in the chat. All right? And um, it is just titled 666. All right? 666. We're going to start with Revelation chapter 13, uh, verse 11 to 18. The Bible says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Now in verse 1, Two horns like a lamb, speaking as a dragon. What time period in history does that put us in? Two horns like a lamb, speak as a dragon. What time period in history does that put us in? Our time, all right? 1798, Sunday law, amen? All right, so this thing then is specifically for us at the end of the world, amen? Amen. These things will be fulfilled in our time, all right? So it says, and he doeth great wonders... So that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make a what? An image to the beast which had the womb by the sword and did leave. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many uh, would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath what? Understanding count the what? Number. The number of the beast. That's an instruction. Do we have understanding? The Bible says the wise shall understand. At the time of the end, knowledge shall what? Increase. And many shall run to and fro, right? And so if your knowledge is increasing by God's grace, we are among the wise. And the Bible says the wise should 
count the number of the bees. That's our task. Amen? All right, let us continue. For it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. Let us go to the next quote. Manuscript releases 153. Sister White tells us, in connection with this scripture, and she quotes what I just read, right? Revelation um, 13, 11 to 18. She says, in connection with this scripture, the entire 14th chapter of Revelation should be studied much by God's people. Verses 9 to what? You can't make it up. What are those verses? And God marked that for us by taking those buildings down at 9-11. The people who, who this instruction is, to for, is for, it's those who witness and are living the time of 9 to 11. Amen? All right. So it says verses 9 to 11 brings to view a what? Special message. So 9-11 was to announce to us that there is a special message here in our time. Amen? against the worshiping of the beast and his image and receiving his mark in, his, in the forehead or in his hand. This warning is to be given to the world by those who are mentioned in which verse? In the 12th verse as keeping the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. 9-11 announced the time for men to start looking for the people who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Amen? 9-11 announced the time that we were to find ourselves among the people who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And by God's grace, this is why we're here. We profess to be among those people. Amen? And we must live up to that light. So let us continue. She says in 2SM, During the past 50 years of my life, I have had precious opportunities to obtain and what? Experience. An experience. I have had an experience in the first Second and third angel's message. And she's our example. Amen. I have had, uh, sorry, the angels represented as flying in the midst of heaven, proclaiming the, to the world a message of what? Warning. A message of warning. And having direct bearing upon the people of uh, living in the last days of earth's history. No one hears the voices of these angels. For they are a symbol to represent whom? The wise. Amen? Those in verse 12. Yes, those that have wisdom. Those in verse 12. Amen? She says, um, to represent the people of God who are working with, in harmony with the universe of heaven. And what does the next line say? What? Men and women. It's not a male thing, right? Men and women, enlightened by the Spirit of God and sanctified through the truth, Proclaim the three messages in their order. And by God's grace, that's why we're here. To be among those men and women who will proclaim, or who is proclaiming these messages how? In their, in their order. But that group of people needs to know how to count the number of the beast. Everyone's following? Let us continue. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 13. It says, But unto which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies my footstool. Are they not all what? Okay, so she says these angels are not angels, they're men. And the Bible says angels are ministering spirits. Each one of us here ought to be a ministering, a ministering spirit. This is what the Bible is teaching us. Amen? Send forth to do what? Minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. All right? So, in the time of that beast that comes up like a lamb and speaks as a dragon, there should be a people, a group of ministering spirits, bringing forward the special warning message at the end of the world. Amen? Found in uh, Revelation uh, 14, verses 9 to 11. And that people is identified in verse 12. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. All right? In order to be a part of that people... God must work a miracle. He must turn you from a sinner to a saint. Amen? Okay. So in that time, what is the false prophet doing? Also working miracles. Amen? This is why they do what they do. Because Satan only repeats what God does. Amen? 
So the Bible says in Revelation 16 and verse 12, and the sixth angel sounded, as I poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, and the way of the king that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three what? Unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophets. For they are the spirits of devils. devils. So God has ministering spirits. The dragon has ministering spirits. Amen? Amen? That's the battle. The battle of the great controversy. Amen? Amen? Continuing on. Drop down to the next quote. Satan has long been preparing for what? Okay. His whole preparation is for us at the end of the world. Amen? All right. To deceive the world. The foundation of his work was laid by the assurance given to, e to Eve in Eden. Ye shall not surely die. In the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Is that a true statement? Will your eyes be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil? Yeah, it's a true statement. All right. But we only ought to eat what God gives us to eat. Amen? Amen? It is true, right? What Satan said will happen. Why? Because that's what he wanted. That's what he wanted. And so God made a people to give them what he, he sought after. But only if we pass the test. Amen? All right. Con yes? Yes? You got to speak up. Amen. Amen. Moving on. Little by little, he has prepared the way for his masterpiece of deception in the development of what? Spiritualism. Spiritualism. He has not reached the full accomplishment of his designs. But it, it will be reached in the last remnant of time. Says the prophet, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. All right? Now drop down to the last, um, to the last section there, except those. Except those who are kept by the power of God through faith in his word, the whole world will be swept into the ranks of this delusion. The people are fast being what? Lulled to a fatal security to be awakened only by the outpouring of the wrath of God. What does it mean to be lulled? It means to be quieted, to be appeased, or composed to rest. To be quieted, appeased, composed to rest rest. And we know this is all about the mind, right? It doesn't mean you're physically resting, but it means in the mind you settle on your lease. Yeah. Alright? Because in Luke 20, 12, I have it there in verse 19, what did he say? So, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. That man was lulled to rest. Just like Belshazzar was lulled to rest because he thought, Man, I, have, I have supplies here for 20 years. Right? So I don't, I don't have to worry about Cyrus. So it is Satan's studied effort at the end of the world to put us to sleep. All right? And not, not just put us to sleep, but in the time when the America speaks like a dragon, specifically in that time. Everyone's following? Yeah, Chrissy. What, 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 what does the Bible say we should do after we eat? Oh. Prove that. How can we prove that from the Bible? I know Sister Y says it, but how can we prove that from the Bible? That we are to walk after we eat? Huh? He may run that. Read it. Amen? All right. The one that came to mind, however, was that Christ is light. Amen? Christ says, eat my flesh and drink my, the bread that I give unto you. And what does he say to do? Walk in the light. 
When you eat, walk. All right? That's that way you don't sleep. Amen? Let's continue. But Habakkuk 2 says, run. Amen? So, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 3 and 4. And I'm just laying a foundation to bring some things together, like, um, later on. The Bible says in verse 3 of 2 Corinthians 11, But I fear, lest by any means the serpent beguile Eve through what? Through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he, he that cometh preacheth another what? Another Jesus, whom ye have not, we have not preached, or if ye receive another what? Okay, so there is the spirits of devils, right? And then there are the ministering spirits. Both of them have a spirit, amen? One have the spirit of truth, the other have the spirit of error. So, yes, it, it's in there. It says, um, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well be with him. For such are what? False apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for who? Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if, the, if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers as the ministers of righteousness whose end should be according to their works. So, Christ is doing his work to transform us into ministers of righteousness. Amen? Because the Bible says angels are ministering spirits. And then why it says those who give, the, the, the three angels are not literal angels. They're the people of God who is giving the special warning. Amen? So Christ is doing his work, but Satan is also doing his work in transforming his servants into angel of angels of light. And in Revelation chapter 12, it says, if we don't understand this, we're going to receive the mark, the name, or the number of his name. Alright? Our job as God's ministers is to count that number. Alright? We know what the mark is. The mark is what? Sunday keeping. Right? Those are, if you worship on the, on, on, if you keep Sunday when it is um, made law, then you will receive the mark of the beast. The name, what is a name in Bible prophecy? Character. A character, all right? But the number of his name, this one kind of, it, it's similar to character. And we'll see that, right? They, they're all um, together. So count the number. The Bible says um, in, in verse, seven, verse 18 of Revelation 11, let him that understand count the number. And the Bible says, um, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to understand is to depart from evil. evil. So the ones that depart from evil, those who fear God, those who have received the first angel's message, is to count the number. And rightly so, because Sister White says, the last scenes plainly revealed is what? The working of the man of sin. Amen? So let us count. What does it mean to count in this text? The word count in this text means to use pebbles in enumeration. To enumerate, or enumeration means the act of counting. So when the Bible says count the number of the beast, it's saying use pebbles when counting the beast. All right? Now we're, 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 uh, we're spiritual people, amen? amen? And so what is a pebble? A stone. And what does that represent in Bible prophecy? The rock, yes. It represents people, it represents messages, right? Amen? All right. It represents also what? Let who is without sin cast the first stone, right? So, do, so it identifies those who are with sin or without sin. Amen? All right. So pebbles, um, it says enumeration. The act of counting or telling a number by naming each particular. The Bible is asking us to look at the beast and name every particular. It's important. That's how we're going to know the difference. We must name every particular. Amen? Continuing on, number two. An account of a number of things in which mention is made of every particular article. Now, how is that different from the first one, naming every particular? After you've named every particular, you now have a tally of everything. Amen? 
But ever so often, you should go back and account for everyone. Make sure you don't forget one. Amen? So you must account by mentioning every particular. Everyone's following? Yeah. This is how you're going to remember. So to count is to gather and to remember. To gather and to keep an account of. Always keeping an account of the, the, the beast. Amen? So what, what, what people like Enriquez and all these people are doing, they follow the beast. And they try to account for everything the papacy does. Right? So technically, they're right. But they don't understand spiritual things. Everyone's following. They're just following the natural man. And they follow him everywhere he go. And every week, there's a sermon on the papacy. He sneezed over there in Africa. So that means prophecy is fulfilling. That's, that's how they look at it. But the Bible is asking us as spiritual people to identify his character. And count each part of his character. And recount. And account for it on a daily basis. Because if you miss one, you might be lost. Everyone's following? Let us continue. So the number or the name of the man. That word number, it, 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 it's um, two things. It, it says the 22nd, 14th, and absolute letter, G4742 as a cross. And it means 600, three score, and six. Right? That word here means, uh, it, it's taken from the word, from the uh, line 600, three score, and six. But it tells us we can look at G4742. And G4742, it means this. Ballpark. A what? A mark. Incised or what? A punched. For what? For recognition or ownership. If you can't account for the character of the beast, you don't know who owns you. You must be able to account for his character. Or you won't know who owns you. Because no wonder Satan transformed his servants into angels of light. So you must be able to count the number of the beast. Everyone's following? Let us continue. And this is why the Jesuits hate math. One of the things the Lord showed is that the Jesuits hate math. They don't really teach math. Because the Bible says we must count what? Count the number of the beast. You must know math to be able to count. Amen? Amen. Yes. Yes. What 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 develops our character? Through the word, right? Through the word, right? What we study, what we eat, right? What you eat makes up the man, right? Your thoughts and your feelings. So we must, we must understand the thoughts and the feelings of that man, right? And because, because then it makes up his moral character. Mm -hmm. Yes. There are certain, certain of those movements, yes, because um, they, they do inform us as to what progress he is making. But all his progress is found in the scriptures. Yes. Amen. Amen. So, um, we are not to follow the natural man. And this is what I want us to see. Not the natural man. All right? But we are to understand his character as opposed to Christ, like she's saying. Right? This looking at the papacy everywhere he goes, it's a snare. Right? Because sometimes he's not doing anything. 
right? For the most, he's not doing it, he's just traveling, right? But still, everywhere he go, he has an influence because of his presence, right? So I'm not, I'm not saying no. But the Lord is trying to teach us how to discern the, the, these things, all right? So in other words, the spirit behind him. The spirit behind the things he's doing. That's why um, I open up by saying we are ministering spirits and Satan turned his spirit. Um, sa the Bible says three unclean spirits come out of the mouth of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. Amen? So we're following the spirit behind his actions. And we know the spirit behind him is Satan himself. So essentially we're following the enemy. All right? So, um, so the last thing we said was for recognition of ownership, right? Um, the word, the, that, that, that's the, 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 the root for the word 600, 3 score, and 6. All right? So the other thing he says, that is figuratively a scar of service. All right? Anyone who has that mark shows who they serve. All right? A scar, who received a scar for us? Christ. So when Christ went on the Roman cross, he received a scar of service to the human race. So whenever the, the father sees it, he sees this Christ scar of service. And he knows everyone who bears these same characteristics is a part of Christ. Everyone who is willing to go to the cross is a part of Christ. Amen? But when he looks over there and he sees you not going to the cross by keeping the Sabbath, he knows that you now have the scar of the beast. Three, uh, 600, three score and and six. That's their scar. Amen? So let's read Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Yes. Yeah, because we, because... I mean, we do. We, we get a seal, right? Uh, again, we're spiritual people, right? It's not a natural scar, right? But we do get, because when Christ went to the cross, what did he get physically? Two holes in his hand and one on his side, right? To show his scar of service, his service to man. Amen? All right, but if we worship the papacy, we're also showing our service to man. It's the same thing, all right? So Christ, did for, Christ took us a physical scar for us, so we don't have to get a physical scar ourselves. All right? So Genesis 1, 26 to 27 and 31, it says, And God says, Let us make man how? In our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God saw, that, uh, God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the what? What day was man made? Okay, so the number of man is what? Six, Six is the number of man. All right? So the man that bears 666, right? Well, it's a man. That's what the Bible says. Here's the number of the man, right? But there's three characteristics that comes with that man. Each one of those is a characteristic of man. All right? Let us continue. This is the character we must avoid. We must have the opposite character. All right? So it says, man was to bear God's image both where? In outward resemblance and in character. Christ alone is the express image of the Father, but man was formed in the likeness of God. His what? His nature was in harmony with the will of God. His what? His mind was capable of comprehending divine things. His what? His affections were pure. His appetites and passions were under the control of what? Of reason. He was holy and happy, bearing the image of God, and in what kind of obedience? Perfect obedience. Here, this quote tells us what the image of God is. It gives us a little insight into the image of God. His nature is according to the will of God. Mind, capable of comprehending divine things. Amen? Affections, pure, appetites, and passion under the control of? Reason. So your nature, 
your mind, your affections, and your appetite must all be under the control of the heavenly uh, order. Amen? This is, what, this is what the image of God is. All right? But the Bible says at the end of the world that they shall force men to worship the image of the what? The image of the beast. All right? So, I never heard that. Well, let us continue. I never heard that statement, but but I, I mean, I don't doubt they make it, yeah. because they they I did a I did a presentation last week on education, on Jesuit education, and and, and it falls right in line uh, with that. They they do take away your 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 spiritual reasoning, and replace it with liberal garbage, right? Philosophy and and all these things. So um, this is Stephen Haskell. Just the bold part. It says, He who is acknowledged as the vicegerent of the Son of God, vicar felidii, I guess that's what that means, right? Everyone's following? Yeah. All right. Uh, it means vice, vice uh, uh, because I know di is God, right, for a fact. So, vicarious filii, fili di, di, I'm, I'm not Latin. It says, that person in his name carries the number what? 600. And 66. For the sum of the numerical value of the Roman letters in his title equals to that number. So our pioneers had that understanding that when you look at the name written on the Pope's, I think it's his hat or above his head, that's, that adds up to 666. But that's the natural. Amen? Because, the, because God wants to write it where? In the, hat, in the, in the mind, right? Not, not above the head, right? Not on, but so it says, that power which again exalts man above the God of heaven forms the image to the beast and bears the number of his name. So you bear the number of his name if you repeat what he did. Everyone's following? And the Bible says he, 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 he comes up like a lamb, he speaks as a dragon, and he what? Exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him. So to receive the mark is to receive it from the papacy. But the number of his name comes from the one who does as the papacy does. The number of his name comes from the one who is made in the image of the papacy. Everyone's following? Man was made on the sixth day because he was made in the image of God. Six has to do with the image. Are we following? All right, go ahead, Brother Odin. Amen. 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 Continuing on. Desire of Ages 129.4. Satan's dominion was that wrested from Adam, but Adam was what? Adam was the vice guarant of the creator. So when Adam was made in the image of God, he was the what? He was the vice guarant. His was not an independent rule. That's what makes you vice guarant. The earth is God's, and, and he has committed all things to his son. Adam was to reign subject to Christ. When Adam betrayed his, so when Adam betrayed his sovereignty in Satan's hands, Christ remains fruitful, a rightful king. So Adam betrayed what? His sovereignty, right? Adam betrayed his, his ability to rule to the hands of Satan. And Satan is taking that ability, took that ability and gives it to the papacy. The dragon gave his power, right? And now the papacy at the end of the world is seeking to what? To make an image. To make an image of the United States. Everyone's following? He's seeking 
to recreate. He's seeking to create an image, to make something in his image. All right? He's, seek, he's seeking to be seen as a creator. And that's why he must have a day of worship. Because after God created, what did he make? A day of worship. So when the United States is made into the image of the papacy, what is the papacy then going to have? A day of worship. Now you have the Sunday law. Everyone's following? But we must count the number of that man. All right? We must know the character of that man. Amen? And we must gather them one people at a time. Amen? And that's what the Bible says. So, when God made man, man had a fall. All right? And the Bible says in, in 1 Corinthians, For what man knoweth the things knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in yeah. him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no. no man but the spirit of God. Once man fell, man forgot about God. They now know not the things of God because they betray their sovereignty to Satan. Amen? All right. So, 666, six, six, right? Three, three, uh, three, main, three character, characteristics of this man. All right? Satan, um, Adam sold sovereignty to whom? Satan. Amen? So these characteristics are Satan's characteristics. Amen? But Satan is going to what? Raise up three men, dragon, beast, and false prophets, and he's going to imbue them with his character. All right? And then one of those men, the beast, will cause America to make an image to that beast. Amen? So you receive the number through the image. Are we following? I hope I'm not losing anyone. Right? Because I'm just drawing a, a, a line from Satan down to the, to, to the dragon beast false prophet, down to the United... Well, the United States is a part of it. But, and, and, and later, is, it's, it's us. Because the Bible says, he, he, go, um, he causeth all to do what? To make an image. Amen? So, let's go now to Matthew 16. Matthew 16, the Bible says, From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his servants, or his disciples, how that he must go to Jerusalem and do what? Suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be what? Killed, Killed and raised again the third day. That's the characteristic of Christ, the second Adam. Amen? Suffer and be and be killed. All right? Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it what? Far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those things that be of... So what is one characteristic of the enemy? Savors the things of men. Amen? And what name is tied to savor in the things of men? No, no, no. It's in the text. Satan. Satan. When the Bible calls him Satan, he's dealing with one who savors the things of men. Amen? Let us continue. Revelation 12. How many names does he have in there? A few, right? The Bible says in Revelation 12, And the dragon, the great dragon, was cast out. That old what? One name. Everyone's following called the devil and Satan. So the dragon can be seen as the serpent, the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. How does he deceive the whole world? One is by savoring the things that be of men. That's one way in which he gets us under his deception. Amen? By, which, by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of men. Amen? Amen? Let us continue. The other way, the other name for him is the devil. Let us read John 6, 70 and 71. Jesus answered them, Have I not chosen, chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil. devil? He spake of Judas, Iscariot, the son of Simon, for it was he who should what? So what does the devil do? Betray. The devil betrays. All right? Satan saves the things of men. The devil Betrays. There's one other name. Serpent. All right. Revelation 12 says, I mean, let's, let's skip that text and go to Genesis chapter 3. 
It says, now the serpent was more what? Subtle. Subtle than any other beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman, yea, hath God what? So the serpent subtly always go against what God says. Right? The serpent is subtle. That's the character of the serpent. Uh, the devil, he betrays. All right? And uh, uh, not, uh, not just betray. How did Judas? Ah, I didn't put that text in here. But how did, how did Judas betray Christ? With a what? Accused. What is that? What, what, what? Judas was accusing him of being the one saying he was king. That's what Judas was doing. He was accusing Christ, right? So the devil, the adversary, accuses. Uh, the, 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 the Satan opposes, because what did Peter do? He opposed Christ. Be it far from thee, Lord, right? So Satan acts in three ways. He either opposes, accuses, or deceives, right? The deception is very subtle. He comes in those three ways. He either accuses you, he opposes you, or he, or he deceives you subtly. Or he goes against God's word. Right? Those are the three things he has in his arsenal. And he can't come in any other way. He can't come in. And the Bible says we must count that number. And we must account for it. Whenever anyone come up to us with any doctrine or with anything, we must first look to see if they're opposing God. If they're betraying God, or if they're going against God's word. Amen. That's how we stay away from receiving the number. That's why the false prophet doeth what? Miracles. Miracles. So we try that spirit. Is he opposing God? Is he betraying God? Or is he going against God's word? And if you lose one of those, you will receive the mark. If you lose one of those... You're not going to detect the enemy. All right? And, and we are the people, like Ellen White says, that what? That keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. We're the ones that have to give this special message at the end of the world. That's how we follow the papacy. We let people know when he's opposing God, when he's betraying God, or when he's speaking against God's word, when he's deceiving by his words. That's how we follow him. Not necessarily just looking at him and he's going here. No, we must know what he's saying and we must be able to let people know that is error. That's what he's doing. Amen? Amen. And, and I praise God for this because the Lord is really trying to uh, 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 fasten, uh, uh, make us like Christ. Because three temptations Satan come with, with Christ. Right? He said what? If thou be the son of God, what? Turn these stones into bread. The second one? He used God's word pro improperly. Yes. Amen? And the third one, all this will I, all this will I give you. Right? All those three is opposing, betraying, and... Because the first one, he betrayed the Son of God. Right? Because God just said he was the Son of God. So what did he say? If thou be the betrayal. Right? The second one, he misuses the word of God subtly. Amen? And the third one, which is the adversary. I'm sorry, which is, um, which one I didn't talk about? The serpent. He opposed, right? Because Christ already owned everything he was trying to give him. All right? So, let us continue. That old serpent. Let us follow. We ought to see Satan in these things. So let us follow. Isaiah chapter 14, Brother, Brother David, you mentioned that earlier. How art thou what? Fallen, Fallen O oh, Lucifer. So Satan took on this, uh, not Satan, Adam took on this state in the beginning. So from that day, man, right, their character was after, they now had the image of Satan. And every man that takes on that character is now made in the image of Satan. That's why they could receive the mark of the beast and the number of his name. Because you must bow down to whom? The beast and his image. Everyone, it's not just the beast, it's both. The image has the number of the beast. That's what Ellen White told us in the quote. No, sorry, Haskell. That's what he said. He says, anyone who does the same thing as the beast receives what? The number of his name. Everyone's following? So when you worship the beast and the image, you receive the mark and the number. 
of his name. All right? So it says, For thou hast said in thine what? In thine heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation. I will sit in the sides of the north. I will ascend to the heights of heaven. I will be like the most high. Most high. Brethren, these characteristics right here is the characteristics of a man. God don't think like that. All right? Because Christ says to the Jews, as he said in the Bible, that like, you shall be as gods. The Lord really wants to make us gods. But gods don't think like that. Gods don't try to overthrow God. Right? Because gods, gods think it's not robbery to be equal with God, but they don't try to overthrow God. Everyone, gods are willing to put down all their, all, their, uh, all their royal regalia and go and save another person. That's what God did. Amen? All right, but Satan is seeking to take that away from us. Now let's go to Ezekiel chapter 28. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart was what? Lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a what? Man. Thou art a man, and not, not God. All right, because Satan did what he did, he was bust down to the, to, he was demoted to a man. Yeah. Everyone's following? Yeah. The character of a man, a fallen man at that, right? Not just, um, not because Christ is a man, amen? amen? The man Christ Jesus is exalted. But a fallen man wants to be God. All right? It says, Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and has gotten gold and silver into thy treasuries. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore, saith the Lord, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations." And they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. And they shall bring thee down to the pit, pit and, they, and thou shalt die the death of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? But thou shalt be a man and no God. In the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised, and, and thine hand... And by the hand of strangers, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Because anyone who wants to be like God will be demoted to the level of man. Yeah. Amen? And, and, and this number 666 is the characteristics of man. Man betrays, man deceives, man, man goes against God's word, and man opposes God. Everyone understand? Man who was made on the sixth day. Amen? Six is the number of man. Amen? And so what is the Lord going to give us when, he, when, 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 he, when, when we go to heaven? A new what? Name. A new name. All right? He has to bring us back to where he once was. All right? So, what does it mean thou hast gotten riches and has gotten silver and gold into thy treasures? Um, the Bible says thou art rich and increasing goods and as you have need of this is, this is speak, speaking specifically to Laodicea. Amen? Deuteronomy 17, the Bible says, When thou art come where? Into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shall possess it, and shall dwell therein, and shall say, I will set a king over me like all the nations that are about me. This text was the instructions to the United States in 1798. Everyone, it says, when thou come into the what? Land. In 1798, the Lord gave his people what? A land. And he says, when thou come into the land of the United States. All right? He says, and shall possess it. And shall say, I will set a what? King over me, like as all the other nations are about me. Thou shalt in no wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among thy what? 
Thy brethren shall thou set king over thee. So the Lord told God, his people in the United States that if they're going to set a king over them, they should set one from among their what? One from among their brethren. All right? Now, who is our brethren at the end of the world? Those that do the will of the Father. Go ahead. Anyone else? Jesus. Anyone else? What did the angel say to John in Revelation 22? I am thy fellow what? So we ought to pick a king from that group. That's what the Bible says. If America was going to pick a king, they should have picked one from among their brethren. Right? And the angel says to the people at the end of the world, I am thy fellow brethren. We want to look to those who teach the third angel's message, who understand and teach and follow and live the third angel's message. If America wanted to set up a king, they should have, that's who they ought to look for. Everyone's following? Let us continue. It says that thou, thou mayest not set a stranger over thee which is not thy brother, but he shall not what? Multiply horses to himself, nor cause people to return to Egypt to the end that he should multiply horses. For as much as the Lord hath said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priest, uh, the Levites. And it shall be with him, and he shall, he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to do what? To fear the Lord his God, and keep, to keep all his words to this law of these statutes, to do them. That his heart be not what? That his heart be not lifted up. God gave the first angel's message to America so that they didn't lift their heart up and pick a king that was not according, that was not of their brethren. That's the purpose of the first angel's message. Well, that's one of the purposes of the first angel's message. All right? And when God found that people in October 22nd, 1844, what did he begin to open to them? The beast, the mark, and the number of his name. And the Lord says, count it. You, the people who are, who are under that, count that. All right? So, that king was not to raise up chariots and gold and silver and take many wives. But in 1989, what does the Bible tell us? Daniel 11.40. He shall come with what? Chariots and horsemen and many, many ships. What do ships, what does the ships bring? That's true. What do they bring? Gold. Isn't that what the Lord said? Tell the king, don't gather what? Gold. The ships bring gold. Let us read. You know how much gold they bring? It's funny. You don't make this up. Let's read the next text. This is Solomon. This is about Solomon. 2 Chronicles chapter 9, verse 13. It says, Now the weight of the gold that came to Solomon in one year was how much? 603 score and what? 6. Solomon had the mark of that man. He increased in gold. The Bible says you shouldn't increase in gold. It's right there. All right? So let us continue. Besides that which chapmen and merchants brought, and all the kings of Arabia and the governors of the country brought gold and silver to whom? And Solomon made 200 targets of beaten gold. 600 shekels of beaten gold went to one target. And 300 shekels made he of beaten gold. 300 shekels of gold went to one shield, and the king put them in, in the house in, of the forest of Lebanon. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with what? Pure gold. And there were what? Six steps to the throne with a footstool of gold. Brethren, what does the Bible, what, what does the fourth commandment say? Six days shall thou labor and do all thy, but the what? We have six steps to the throne of God. Solomon made his throne of pure gold six steps to that throne. The papacy, that's the spirit of the papacy is what I'm, uh, what I'm saying. 
He's saying six days to my throne of gold, to my Sunday worship. Everyone's, it's the same thing. He's doing the same thing. So in Solomon, we could count a part of the character of that man. Everyone's following? He's going to amass a lot of gold and he's going to have chariots and, and horses. Amen? The ships bring gold. We'll see that. Um, drop down to verse uh, 23. It says, And all the kings of the earth sought the presence of whom? All the kings of the earth sought the presence of the one who has the gold. Amen? All right. It says to hear what? His wisdom that who? God put in his heart. But we know Satan is the God of that king. But all the kings of the earth are going to flock to that king to hear wisdom. That's what the Bible is saying. Amen? Let us continue. Drop down to verse 25. And Solomon had 4,000 4, stalls for horses and what? Chariots. And 12,000 horsemen whom he bestowed in the what? Chariot cities and with the king at Jerusalem. Now, there's a lot in here if we sit down and really try to parse out every symbol. All right? But I'm just taking a few things to make this point. So, verse um, 26. And he reigned over all the kings from the river, even to the land of the Philistines, and to the border of what? Okay. From the river unto the land of the Philistines, even to the border of? In Daniel 11, 40 to 45, in verse 41, it says, And he shall what? Enter into the what? Into the glorious land. And what's the next thing he takes? Egypt. What is Solomon here? From the river, even unto what? Egypt. Right? It's the same thing. Right? So let us continue. There is a text. I didn't read it. Ah, verse 21, I didn't read it. It says, for the king's ship went to Tarshish. All right? And it says they brought gold, silver, and I. So all the ships is where the gold is coming from. So when you get chariots and horsemen and many ships, he's receiving the gold as well. Now, where is the world's gold stored? Who knows? No. The world's gold is stored where? Fort Knox in Kentucky, in the United States. So when America gave, what did America give to the papacy? The gold. Chariot, they gave him chariots and horsemen and many ships. They gave him the gold and he gave him the army. Everyone's following? Yeah, so in the natural, so in the spiritual, amen? So, um, so we can see in Solomon a character of that number six, amen? He enriches himself, himself, and everything he makes is of gold. Who did that in the Bible? Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. Amen? So we can simply follow the number or count the number. So Nebuchadnezzar is a pebble in that number. Everyone's following? Solomon is a pebble in that number. Judas is a pebble in that number. The activity of Peter, Peter when Christ gave, told him he was going to die, is a pebble. We're just gathering the pebbles. Amen? David took up how many pebbles to kill Goliath? Wow. Okay, guys, we are David. That's what we're doing. We're just gathering the pebbles. Amen? And by God's grace, we're going to teach one powerful message that's going to slay that giant in the hearts of men. Amen? Let us continue. Now, skip, go down to page... Uh, go down to page... I don't have a page, page 16. I didn't put pages. But go down to the heading that says power to give life. Power to give life. We'll close on this, um, this section. It is 16, but I don't have pages in my... If you have Adobe, you should say 16 on the side of it. Right? Power to give life. Everybody see that one? Because the Bible says, thou, 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 um, thou being a, 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 a man, makest thyself what? God, right? So that everyone who, who, who has the characteristic of the beast and the number of the beast is one who maketh himself God. That's it. All right? So the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, who oppose it and what? That's what we just went through, right? Peter, Judas, 
right? And, and, and Satan, the devil, and the serpent, right? Opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God, God all that is worship. So that he as what? God. As God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Okay? Um, what, what? It's in the notes. What are some prerogatives of God? It's there. Provider. Judge. Right? So the papacy wants to provide for the world. He's going to become the world provider. Amen? He's going to become the world's judge. Amen? Right? Because that he's just taking attributes from God. Right? It says he's going to be a lawgiver. Because they're going to make a Sunday law. Amen? And lastly, he wants to be a creator. All right? Now, when we go back to Isaiah 14, um, there's a part that I, did, I didn't read. Oh, fallen was for son of the morning, thou this week in the nation. Yes, I will sit on the sides of the north. Right? Now, what's on the north side of the sanctuary? What's on those tables? Two loaves of what? Six. And what does Satan want to do? Add himself. So what are you going to have? Six, six? Six. That's what Satan wants to put himself in a place where he doesn't belong. But is God going to put us in that place? Yes, because he created man in his what? In his image. We're going to resemble those six loaves. Because you become what you eat. By beholding, we become changed into the image of God. Amen? So... It's a nice little thought that I have, and I don't really understand it yet, but something about Christ being creator, we're going to receive a part of it. I don't know what it is. But in the new heavens and the new earth, maybe, maybe just the 144,000, I don't know. But there's going to be some people who have a part to play in whatever is created after that. Because Christ is going to give you exactly what he has. And I, that's what Satan wants. That's what he wants. That's what the papacy is claiming to be, a creator. Because the only person that could, that could ordain a day of worship is one who what? Creates. One who creates. Because after God created, he said, rest and worship. Amen? So what is the papacy creating? The Bible says, let us make man in our own image. All right? And it says, and the Lord God did what? formed man in the dust and did what? Breathe into his nostrils. So how do you create? You form and you breathe. Amen? Alright. So, this next quote is taken from this website. Alright? And, and, and I like it because it fits with what the Lord is teaching us. I know it's true because it fits into the truth. Amen? It doesn't matter where it comes from. I know it's true. This is what they say about Jesuit education. All right? It says, Jesuit slash Catholic education. All right? It says, it is highly academic with a focus on what? Education. On, no, no. Human. On humanities oh. in the classics of what? Literature, Literature history, and language. language with emphasis on what? Reason. On reason. Leading to what? Philosophy, Philosophy and what? Theology. And theology. This, this is what God is doing the same thing for us, right? Leading us to philosophy and theology. He wants us to know the philosophy of, 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 of the science of salvation, which leads us to the religion of God. So the Jesuits teach the same way. They teach the science, which leads to the worship of the papacy. Amen? But listen to this next part. Mathematics, for example, was seen as what? They don't want math because we... If you could count, you could count the number of the beasts. Amen? So no math, right? Because math is, is very absolute. Math points you to God. It doesn't matter, right? So the next thing it says, the curriculum, however, aimed to do what? To form. to form and not just inform character. So how do the papacy create? Through their education, through their version of education. Everyone's following? Since 1989, they've been educating the United States. All right? Because the Bible says, the United States comes up like a lamb, speaks as a dragon, right? And the Bible says, it made an image, what? 
the papacy is creating its image in the United States as God created his image in Adam. That's the work. They're now acting as creator. Everyone's following? Let us continue. It says, Christ object. Skip that. Go down to dust of the ground. It says, Now, O Lord God, let thy, pro let thy promise unto David be my father be established. For thou hast made me king over a people like the what? Dust of the, dust of the ground. So people is likened unto what? Dust. The dust. And the Bible says God formed man where? Dust. So where is the papacy going to form people? In the earth kingdom. In the nation that rise out of the earth. Okay. Yes, the United States. He's seeking to create. Everyone's following? That's what's it. And it's right under our noses. He's acting as creator right under our noses. But the Lord is teaching us to count his character. Amen? Let us continue. It says in the next quote, But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself where? Which is the what? Church, Church of the living God. The pillar and what? Church. Okay, so the papacy is taking a man out of the ground, which is the church. He's, take, he's creating his man out of the Protestant church. Because the church is the ground, God's church is the ground and peel off. Therefore, Satan's church is the ground and peel off. Error. Error. And they became Babylon in Millerite history. So Satan is forming his man out of that ground. Out of that pill, that, 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 that church. Amen? Okay. And it says, and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. When God made Adam, the Bible says he gave him what? Dominion. Dominion. All right? So how is America exercising the same power as the beast before him? He's also given dominion. It's the same process. He's just doing it in this natural, because he, obviously he can create. So he's using the things that God created to act like a creator. They are really want to be God. And this is what they're really trying to be God. All right? But God says we must be able to see him. We must be able to see that man form, forming in our own hearts. That's the key. We must be able to see that man forming in our own heart. Just as we're able to see that man being formed in the heart of the United States, which is Washington, D.C. Amen? Let's continue. It says, verse 15, let's just read verse 15 of Revelation 13. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should do what? Speak and cause. Did God not give life to Adam? How did he give life to Adam? By breathing into him. So what is the, what is the papacy going to do to the United States? Breathe into the United States. Since 1989, the papacy has been working on that. They're forming the United States since 1980. They're forming their, their, their man, right? And at the Sunday law, he's going to breathe life into the United States that he should what? Cause, speak, and what? Cause as many who would not what? Because once God gave Adam life, he gave him power to speak and to cause his whole posterity to worship God on the Sabbath day. That's what God gave him. Power to speak, which was to be fruitful and multiply, and to cause all those who came from him to worship God on the Sabbath day. And Satan took that from Adam in the beginning. All that he took from Adam. And Christ came and restored it. Amen? Okay, so it says, And causeth all, both, great and, both small and great, rich and poor, to receive... Uh, to receive the mark in their right hand and in their forehead that no man might what? Buy, Buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the, number, or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Sister White tells us, then the Catholics will beat the Protestants. This is them breathing into the Protestants. Amen? This is the breath. Then the Catholic beat the Protestants, go forward and issue a what? A decree that all who will not observe or all who will not worship on the first day instead of the Seventh day shall be what? Slain. Shall be slain. And the Catholics whose number was are large will stand by the Protestants. The Catholics will give their power to the what? Image of the beast. And then Protestants will work as their mother worked before them 
to destroy the sins. Adam was supposed to work as his creator work to uplift the sins. That was his job. But he sold that to Satan. But praise God, Christ bears the scar of service. Amen? Christ bears the scar of service to man. He became a servant to man. If the papacy really wanted to be like God, he should become a servant to man. All those who received that mark, 666, it obviously it's not a physical mark, but it's a character trait. Right? The, the number, sorry, not the mark, the number. All those who received that number have demonstrated that they've listened to the United States in worshiping the beast. Everyone's following? Brethren, this is what Satan is trying to effect in our hearts. This is why he's fighting so hard against us at the end of the world. He's trying to get us to form that image in our heart. All right, and Connor did some studies a while ago showing that it's, it's, really not, it's less about the physical papacy and it's more about the Catholic in you. That's what, that's what, what God wants us to see. All right? And Christ says he stands at the door and knock. If anyone will open, he will come in and do what? Sup. Sup. He will give you the bread of life. He will give you his life to eat so that you can have his image as opposed to the image of the beast. Amen? Right now, the Lord is just trying to take us out of the world. He's really trying to form a character in us. But in order for, for him to do that, we must see it because by beholding we become changed. And I believe he's opening up these little things so that we can behold him. All right? And so also by beholding the false character, we can also shun that one. Because the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from us. So, I will stop here and I encourage everyone to continue looking into this topic. God has more thoughts that he wants to give us because we all have different minds. Amen? And I want to encourage everyone to, to look into this topic. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them um, throughout the day um, that we can uh, answer them and, and, and we can all grow together. Because I know I don't know everything <laughs> concerning what I've just read. There's a lot of light in these texts. And it'll take much minds to bring out everything um, from these texts. So by God's grace, um, I pray that we were blessed and, and that as we internalize these things, as we bring these things home to the heart, that the true character, that we become that true man, that man that is made in the image of God, and that we can follow the Lamb with the server he goeth. Shall we close with prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you so much for this blessed Sabbath day you've given us. Lord, we pray, O oh Lord, that these truths will not fall on deaf ears, but Lord, they will be uh, taken into the heart and that they will, they, they will be uh, uh, stamped on our hearts, O oh Lord, that they will be etched there, that, that, that in time, Lord, when, when we are tried, when we are troubled, that these things will come back to our remembrance, O oh Lord, by the Holy Spirit, that we may be able to put up a standard against the enemy. Help us, Lord, not to form the character of the enemy, but to form the character uh, that Christ has so uh, cut out for us in his life. And we pray and ask, O oh Lord, that in the end, each one of us under the sound of my voice will be saved uh, when you come in your kingdom. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.